EC Awards. I'm Law, and joining me right now is GV and Ender. Thank you, Berlin. How are you doing, guys? We're doing great. I can barely hear I you, love, but we're doing yeah, great. It's fine. It's fine. Oh. It's an awesome time what to be here. Look, it's the biggest night of the year. I came out here. I got booked for the LEC Awards. I've been Just waiting for, for so long. Just for tonight. Just for tonight. I mean, this is what week eight and the Super Week is about, of course, because tonight we are all about honoring the unsung heroes of the league. Coach of the Split, MVP? No. Tonight is about those who push the boundaries and achieve the intangible. Berlin, are you ready? <laughs> I think they're ready. I think they're ready. Let's have a look at the first nominees in the first categories. Blaze of Glory Award, honoring the most spectacular death of the offseason. Wow. A bit BM, but I mean. Wow. All right. And the first one. It's Hill saying on Rapun. I mean, yeah. I mean, Hill is saying Blaze of Glory, fantastic deaths. Hill saying is about as good as they come. Next up, of course. We have Thank Mickey, uh, the 10 death power spike versus Mad. Respectable. This one was a good one. And look, the thing is, you expect this out of a Yasuo player, but to, to cultivate the 10 death power he, spike yeah. from support, it's next level. It's revolutionary, really. Mickey just breaking the boundaries of what's possible. And last one we had, we couldn't see it, but upset versus humanoid. A classic, of course. An absolute classic. Classic. Uh -huh. And of course, look, yesterday Upset was getting all the kills, but you yeah. rewind the clock a little bit, definitely not the same. But we also need some. to find a winner here before we move on. Uh, so, personally speaking, think? I'm throwing out my own coin here. Hilly, right? Is it Hilly? Hilly? All right. Hilly's got some good deaths, but I'm, I'm a fan of quality or, or of quantity over quality, so I'm gonna actually go with Mickey on this one personally. He, he gave everything that day, but no. Ooh. Okay. I'm gonna go with the crowd here, and it goes to Hiri. <laughs> All right. All right. Amazing achievements. Next, Next up. up, though, we have the inaugural I Hacking Love Arcane Award for Outstanding Achievement on a Champion featured in the hit Netflix series created by Riot Games. Arcane created by Riot Games. Here are your nominees. Hashtag ad. <laughs> <laughs> First up, Malrong on Vi. Look at yes. that. Wow, yeah, that's great. Really Amazing captivates skin, her character there. I have to say, great skin. I mean, and the impressive thing too is usually in the show, you know, she only had one glove on. Malrong really showing it off with both on. With Spoiler alert yeah. for next season. Oh, uh, my, my bad. Bjorn with Victor. the victor. See, hmm. now I feel like Deo really tapped into a little bit more power than we've seen on Victor in the hit show Arcane, created by Riot Games, trademark. Um, but still, shows off so much influence on that pick. It's incredible stuff. Yeah. Okay, but no, the laser, not, though. Not a the fan. laser, though. No, no, no. That's but here we go, it's Fauna! And surely this is the one that takes it. Look at her. And... Rocking the Star Guardian skin. We recently Why just has none of them the used the arcane so, yeah. skin, actually? I, I don't know. Like, what, what was up with that? It's kind of a scam. It is kind a scam. scam. Yeah. Although I, I am glad you called her Powder, because, you know, we, we watch the show. We get yeah, her. Her name's Powder, not here. Jinx. All right. Any hits on the uh, the winner for this one, the crowd? Which Honestly? One? Guess? Powder? 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 OK. Powder. The clip sucked, but uh, I like the character. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I mean, it really, it's just what, what character you like the best. Honestly. They get the win. Powder, Powder takes it then now. Moving up to the third category. Well, our third category features the most outstanding achievement in terms of costuming and fashion. So let's have a look wow. at some of these modules. Straight First of all, of we have Kajol with whatever that look was and uh, G2 broken being G2 blade things. and okay. face part artistry coming through. And we've got a lot of different wow. ideas here, whether it's the 80s Look style. Summer fashion! Oh. Fun! Oh. A. Look, you a already know. My yeah, MVP. I think you already know. I think you already know. Uh, I'm there, I'm there. Yeah. The fans get it. The fans' choice. Yeah, Odo Amne gets it, of course. And finally... <laughs> Crowning the most outstanding supported cast in our content species. Here's the candidate. Flak Duck. <laughs> I mean, he's 
practically a player in the LEC now, given how famous he got. Look at him. Flack he even got stuck. the tiny so glasses. Cute. Oh, this is not Flacket's duck. Not Flacket's well. duck. What a creep. Yeah. And of course we have Cuddles Who's the goat. Guy? Oh, that was the Okay, cool. And, and then uh, we have Perks. Perks. Classic clown outfit. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was trying to go to the movies, but no, a clown, apparently. Okay, okay well. Okay, crowd, what do you think? Flacket? Yeah. I hear the duck. Flacket's name, which we won't speak the name on broadcast because I hear it's really offensive, but <laughs> it has to be Flacket's duck. He's the winner. Really Brilliant fantastic. Show. Fantastic Brilliant stuff show. from all of yeah. the candidates here tonight. Anyone could have taken this, but I in mean, the end, yeah. every vote counts. And this is why everyone came tonight to just see the EDC Awards. So thank you all for joining. The awards may be over, but we have more on the line as Vitality, Fnatic, and Excel have their eyes on our last two playoff slots. The final day of the LDC regular season starts now. And Lord Kane! to the desk. And welcome to the final day of the oh. LEC 2022 regular season, live from Berlin, Germany. Three teams are still in the fight for the two last playoff spots, and Excel's chances are on the line as they face off against Astralis and our do or die opening match of the day. I'm still with Ender and Goldberg. Thank you guys Hello for joining. There. How excited are you? Well, it's less exciting than the LEC Awards, for sure. Well, well you can't just talk <laughs> smack about the LEC Awards now that it's over. No, in all seriousness, fun start to the day, but so much yeah. riding on the line here tonight. 100%. There's teams that's going to be joining us for playoffs. There's teams that's going to be let out. And, I mean, the stakes, we keep saying it, but I had never. It is actually crazy that the last day comes down to this, but... Let's talk about what happened last night because the big news was G2 Esports being the first team to qualify for Worlds globally after their win against Misfits yesterday. And it was really surprising because throughout the year we've been used to having banger games between these two teams, but G2 this time made no difference. Honestly, I, I'm still so surprised that G2 is one of the winningest teams towards the second half of the split, but either way they have picked them up. And I think during towards this Super Week as well, a lot of their members started shining. It was not just one member stepping up, it just felt like it was all of them and securing that spot yesterday against Misfits was phenomenal for them after they've been under so much pressure and stress. Absolutely, and sort of tracking their progress over the year from being a poor BO1 team in spring, then going on the huge best of five runs yeah. in playoffs to get first. Now, in the regular season to come out on top, it's the year-long effort that's resulted in them being our top seed in the playoffs. It was really interesting, as Yankos tweeted yesterday, three weeks ago, they were still struggling for playoffs, and now they're the first team to globally qualify. But I know many of you guys have been wondering why they made it to World Championships. So a bit of explanation, since they're guaranteed Top two in the summer, they have a minimum of 90 championship points locked already, resulting in 180 total points, which no team can pass. Since the first seed is going into playoffs, cannot place lower than fourth, they are locked at Worlds. That's how it works. So there it goes. An nah. explanation. Nah. So, I mean, if they do secure first for this playoffs or regular season as well, at least we can say that, you know, they're actually feeling like they're one of the teams to serve enough of them. And mm -hmm. with the ramp up that they have, um, hopefully for them, they can continue that towards Worlds to replicate, well, at least the start of MSI. Let's not talk about the later half We of won't it. talk about the rest. Let's focus on the win streak, of course. But following up on the addition, what happened last night? Fnatic beating Vitality in one of the craziest games of the season. Back and forth so much, and it was such a banger. I mean, this was crazy. I was like getting ready to come back to the Casio last week. was expecting some good games. This one, an absolute bloodbath between the teams. Upset emerges as the complete hero for Fnatic. So many close fights. We went all the way 40-50 
50 minutes, but it was just a nice edge between Upset and Perks. And in this fight in particular, I think it's the difference between one auto, between whether Upset or Perks survives. That could have changed the entire impact of the game here. As Upset flashed in, Perks does the exact same, but Upset shuts him down. And it's just Fnatic really coming online, not just from the jungle roll positioning with Rasok suddenly finding his footing on the potter, Poppy. It's also just this was a bot lane that had received criticism throughout this season. And I think they have really come together. Haley struggled on Enchanters at the beginning of the mm -hmm. summer season. Now moving towards the end of it, well, his positioning yesterday was absolutely phenomenal. And when you're playing Lulu, it's never going to look flashy. But even then, he still had a crucial flash polymorph in the end oh, of the yeah. game to make sure Offset could survive and finish that game. Super clutch move. And we'll talk about Zeri a bit later, which was, um, it was an important win for Fnatic for them to keep their fate in their own hands. But some teams got eliminated, of course, yesterday. Excel versus SK, also an exciting game. Ah, but are we convinced for Excel here? I'm not sure. Difficult early game. What do you make of this? Yeah, not necessarily fully convinced, although them going towards scaling is an interesting decision going away from the early game focus. So even after struggling yeah. in the early game, they have the team fight power to compete against what was an all-in comp, surely, from SK. And you can still see it, right? SK, you know, they came in but where they really just wanted to throw everything at the kitchen sink at their opponents. It worked out in the first game of the day. Yesterday, unfortunately, not the case. And I can respect the fact that they came in swimming, they swinging rather and really Swimming just wanted too. to send it every time go for every team fight they saw uh, unfortunately that scaling off aspect of excel mm. was your superior yesterday with the extra range advantage from a c and Siva. yeah even in the last jazz who had a great weekend the the yasuo into the draven finishes the game 10 and 1 but out team fighting azir siver with the draven to lead it just isn't gonna happen no matter what jazu did they had to snowball it earlier and they're gonna say goodbye to playoffs it's sad for them but they have a good run and good gilius can't pull the miracle on every time Time. They have to give others a chance. Let's take a look at the standings. As we have now four teams locked in playoffs, still fighting for two positions. That's crazy. I, I don't even know if we had this ever in Europe on the last day. Yeah, Such I mean, a crazy right. This like coming into this last week with what like we had nine teams still fighting for playoff spots. It's always I feel like we always have some crazy scenarios, but still on this last day, whether or not Fnatic are able to pull it through, yes, their destiny's in their own hands, but so many other variables on the cards between Vitality and Excel. Yeah, but it's not even that. You take a look at the teams that's already fighting for sleeping on the top right. So there's just so much for every team still to play for. Yeah, and we'll see what can happen actually today and to run you through how either Vitality, Excel or Fnatic can qualify. I'm just going to walk to the Telestrator that you see <laughs> over here and use the wonderful tool that we had made for you. So first, very simple, Fnatic or Vitality, one win and you're in. That's really easy. Moving on to Excel now. Excel cannot lose to Astralis, otherwise they're eliminated from the race for playoffs. Now, moving to the next scenario, if Excel wins and they have to hope for either Vitality or Fnatic to lose to be in the playoffs. Now, moving to the next scenario, and this is the spicy one. If Excel wins and uh, let me check, Vitality lose and Fnatic wins, then they will play a tiebreaker scenario at the end of the day for the last playoff spot as Vitality would be already in. So, you're covered with all the scenarios right now. We'll get you through throughout the day to see if anything changes. But for now, let's talk about the meta. As we're seeing right now, AD Carry seems to be a bit OP and Andrew and Goldberg have something to say. Yeah, you say a bit OP. I, I, OP, I think they might be a little bit shattered right now. These are the Pentacle ADCs. We saw what Upset did yesterday. And really, we're seeing these huge team fighting AD carries come out in a big way, especially towards the tail end of the season. And we see this occurrence often in the meta. As soon as tanks start getting played more in the top lane, all of a sudden, you see a lot more Enchanter supports and these team fight scaling ADCs. And the perennial one of those is the Sivir that's been taken over. Yeah, generally speaking, I feel like Sivir is one of those champions that in theory she should be easy to shut down. Lack of mobility only has that spell shield. But quite often, we don't see a team go the entire way to really shut it down. Well, multiple ways to access that backline. Because of that, when she's left on check, she literally just runs at you. Not only that, she gets the extra team uh, movement speed, of course, to really facilitate both the frontline and her allies. And that makes it so easy to kite around her, to play for her, to go for these high damage number we'll see. And even the pentacles we've seen from Combat as well with this massive AoE damage towards the late game. Oh, it's absolutely insane. I love 
love seeing it combined with a lot of really heavy engage to try and dive on the opposition. You can see it here with the Rakan coming up very, very strong. Now, on the other hand, Zeri turns into this champion that's a little bit more on her own. She doesn't have the same support for her team, but you put a Lulu next to her, an Enchanter support, and like upset yesterday, he was just frontlining for the team, especially once a team fight starts to break down. Zeri is one of the best AD carries in the game to continue chasing and turning one or two kills into five. Yeah, and once again, it's the fact that if you don't have any lockdown against these champions, if you leave them on check, it's pretty much GG, and we've seen it so many times. So I'm tired of kind of seeing these get first pick, right? And then it's like, oh my God, they're broken. Yeah, but I feel like if you also have that extra lockdown, maybe you can try and really make it a skill matchup instead. But if you don't, well, it's gonna look like yesterday where Seri just runs them up in these team fights. Yeah, Zeri can absolutely take over a, a game, which brings up Twitch as an interesting pick. A lot more teams have been pulling that out recently. You pair it up with a Renata and Orn, big team fight power yeah. to contest and that range as well, super massive. Yeah, it's one of the things that he's actually one of the few AD carries that plays super well into the Seri. You match your scaling, even on first item like Blade of the Rune King, it's great. Works fine with engage supports, works fine with the enchanters too to match whatever the enemy is throwing at you. And it's the fact that Seri needs to ramp up with movement speed to really be active and just, you know, kite all her enemies. But Twitch, as soon as he opens up after coming out of stealth, you outrange them, you damage it massive, and you can win a team fight before it even begun. We saw Neon do this specifically, we've even seen Kabe do it as well. And I think it's one of the champions that we'll see a lot of more of as well as a counter pick into either the Seri or Sivir in terms of matching the scaling later on. Absolutely, all three of these picks things you have to keep your eye on. Now, there's nothing more for us to say uh, than 80 carries are OP. So back over to you, Lore. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, something they're not used to hearing, I think, and jugglers would be really excited about that. But moving away from the LEC for a couple minutes, I'm incredibly excited to welcome as a special guest to our show, Noah from the Spanish Superliga broadcast. We'll be talking a bit about the Spanish ERL and looking forward to the EU Masters. Hi, Noah. Hola, how are you? Hi, Laura. Thank you very much for having me. I'm super excited to be here once again to talk about the Super League teams. We've had like a super exciting uh, summer split, and finally we got yeah. uh, we have our three representatives. It's an honor to have you here, and honestly, so many things change for the Super League this week, starting with Team Heretics, a roster without any LEC experience, so many brand new players. But this is the mm -hmm. best team in the Super League this season, isn't it? Absolutely, yes, even though they ended up being like the second in a regular split, mm -hmm. but after beating Giant 3-0, you can absolutely say that they are the best team right now, locked in finals. And also it's exciting to have Heretics in the European Masters because it is an amazing chance for the organization to, you know, start to gather some international fans as they are going to be in the LEC 2023. No LEC experience though, but some veterans like Ivo in the top lane, but also, what makes me feel so excited about Team Heretics is that it is a roster with a lot of promising players that may be in TLC in a year or maybe next play. Who should we be looking forward to then? Because I hear that Jack Spectra is one of the LEC candidates, maybe? <laughs> Absolutely, yes. I mean, Jack Spectre has been, in my opinion, the most consistent one, even though considering that Heretics didn't make it to playoffs right. in the spring split, uh, he's been outstanding. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. But despite all of this, Heretics is not a one-man army team. They are really good at playing to everyone's strength, but definitely this is a player you need to take a look. All right, we'll keep an eye on him, maybe for next year in the LEC. Okay, moving now to Giants, a more experienced roster, uh, I want to say, with some yeah. LEC familiar names. I'm thinking of Max Lor, Jizuke, Advian. What is special about this team? Uh, what is special? This is a roster with superstars here in the, <laughs> in the Super League. I mean, we were Giants made a lot of changes because they missed playoffs too in uh, in spring split. But I mean, the most I think the most celebrated uh, change was uh, taking back Jisuke to his former house. Jisuke knows what it is to be a Spanish champion. It was one of the most amazing finals I ever witnessed. The one with Giants versus Mad Lions in 2017. That roster was almost completely promoted to the LEC uh, the next the next year. And yeah, Jisuke. Is back. He's absolutely the best player that uh, we have right now in the in the league. If you take a look at the at the stats, it's 
absolutely stunning uh, how good this guy and this guy is but also having Max Blur the duo jungle myth from Giants is absolutely amazing you also have at Vienne who's been yeah. very vocal about how much he wants to get back to the LEC also uh, uh, talking about how Kadiria himself are the best bowling that we have in the in the Super League even though they faced a lot of difficulties and also we have Antonio who maybe he was, he's not an LEC player but he's been playing for ages this wow. is a roster that is going for everything in Spain. I'm so excited about them and also super nice to hear about former LEC stars. Looking forward to seeing mm -hmm. them again also maybe in the LEC, but uh, let's talk about the last team, Bison, a team we know well, and a team with weird drafts <laughs> still. That's the memory I had from them in spring. Are, are they still? Yeah, okay, they're still drafting weird things, it seems. I mean, it, it looked like somehow they quit the odd draft. <laughs> I mean, you can forgive them a couple of top servers at the beginning of the of the split, but we were like, oh, they are playing standard. What is going on? Bison, no more Lot Champagne, or what is going on? But suddenly, the best of five came in, and we were like, okay, you have Renekton ADC. What is going on in here? I'm absolutely missing something. You have Renekton ADC. You have the Ormids. Uh, you have, I, I don't know, the, the Swain is, is the most normal that you've been playing uh, lately, but absolutely, yes, the craziness is back again with Bisons. This is Spain's favorite dark horse in the league. I all don't right. know how these guys made it again against all odds. Once again, all the way to the European Masters, they are amazing. They're just too good. Super exciting to see this team, honestly. Let's talk about the bracket a bit. Uh, Semi-finals yeah. on Monday between Giants and Bison. Finals on Saturday. Run me through what we can expect from these games, please. Uh, honestly, I don't know what to expect anymore, considering that we have the Bisons variable in there. Uh, Bisons were able to beat two of the favorite teams in spring. I thought they were absolutely done when they faced uh, Koi uh, last week. But again, with the three, with the three-one uh, versus Koi, I, I don't know. It's maybe gonna be uh, another Bisons victory. I think Giants roster is super powerful. I think we're gonna have again an Heretics versus Giants final. But tomorrow's best of five is is going to be absolutely nuts and you should be paying attention to it. What are the hopes for the region at EU Masters this year? Thank you very much. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I have no no hopes in this, okay. uh, uh, in this European Masters. Like, they absolutely destroyed my heart no. last spring. So my heart is made of, is made of ice this time. Uh, I, I burn a hole in my heart so they can, <laughs> they can destroy it. Okay. No, not this time. You're not doing this to me again. <laughs> Don't do this to Noah. But thank you, Noah. Thank you so much for joining us and all these insights. I'm still a little upset that you broke a baguette on live broadcast. Oh, please. But that's fine. It's no. just better. Thank you so much. You Adios. just dip the baguette into the paella. You I can know. be mad at me. You can be mad at me. That's all right. It's just better. But thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Bye bye. But we'll stay on Goodbye. the topic of the EU Masters, having a quick look <laughs> into the LFL and the NLC as well. And here, Goldberg, I know that in the past I used to treat you as an enemy. Yeah. But, but... as now a caster of the LFL, I welcome you here as a friend. All Merci. right, let's. Things changed in the LFL. Um, BDS Academy, especially, surprisingly taking down LDLCOL. I think it was the biggest surprise we had last week. Honestly, coming into this, uh, European, well, European regional leagues is split out of all the regions. I thought LDLC would just be a cut above everyone else, and they looked to be the best team there was. Almost had a clean uh, season of the regular start, where they just didn't only drop one game. And then towards the playoffs, they drop a game to BDSA, which of course has lots of familiar names. Mm -hmm. Crowny, Adode's come back there after the um, LEC split he had with BDS, and then Iker in the mid lane uh, on LDLC, someone to look for as well in that regard. Wow, I I'm really looking forward to seeing what the rest of the playoffs is going to be about, because LDLC is still here. Uh, they can reach the finals, but I'm really happy that we're sending new teams also in the EU Masters this year. We'll see if they can keep the trophy, what you can see here is that Carmine, unfortunately, won't be here to defend their title. Let's see if the LFL can still prevail. I mean, I hope so. It should be quite easy. I mean, there's no biggie. I even uh, chatted a bit with Noah before broadcast, and she was nice. like, hmm, maybe I need to pick an LFL team to root for as well. So <laughs> <laughs> the chances are not too good. But if I want to go back to the region I betrayed, yes. of course, that is the NLC. Um, and that's still going on strong. Surprisingly enough, in the NLC, the team that made it to finals already is called Dusty. And you might not be familiar with Dusty, but they're a small Icelandic organization uh, with, well, 
which makes this just incredible. The fact that they're going up against all these high budget rosters you get from the Academy teams and from X7 as well. If you're not familiar with X7, that's where Haru was before he came um, to Vitality 2. And of course, we have that semi-finals being played out tomorrow with JDXL and X7 in terms of who's going to meet Dusty for the finals. So lots of European Regional League for you guys up there. If you do not feel like the LEC Super Week was enough, there's mm -hmm. still loads of stuff coming in this next week. Yeah, and you must it's going to be really interesting. New stars rising, of course. But as we come back to the LEC, Excel survived their first do or die match yesterday with a win over SK. And their head coach, Young Buck, is now standing by Quick Shot. Take it away. I am joined by the one and only Young Buck ahead of his game versus Astralis. Crowd very energetic and excited. Um, I'm going to make it very clear. Win and you have a shot at playoffs, lose and you are eliminated. How does that make you and the team feel knowing how important this game is? I think surprisingly we're not that nervous because it's now a feeling that if we don't win, we don't deserve it. And if we do win, then it's not in our hands anymore. So I think we'll be way more nervous later in the day if we have one, um, cheering for the right teams than we are right now. Cheering for the right teams, I do like that, of course, because of the fact that the standings could end at 9-9, nine and nine, similar to Vitality and Fnatic. Your fate will be a little bit in the hands of some of the other teams. I want to quote something that I think Larson was saying on the desk yesterday, talking about how he perceived or interpreted XL struggles this summer to maybe be a little bit of cockiness or ego, you know, starting really strong, having a lot of hype behind the team. How would you describe the struggles that XL have faced the last few weeks? I think we started struggling um, when the LEC break hit in, with the break week. I think that we pushed ourselves really hard uh, in the Korean boot camp and in the preseason we trained harder than the other teams. And as the meta shifted and we started to become a little bit more tired, I could tell from some of the players that they started to perform uh, lesser than the previously. Um, combining that with the meta changes, we were just a little bit slow to adapt. And that's a problem we kind of had in Spring Split as well. And it cost us a few games here and there by not having the right priorities. I really appreciate the honesty. Young Buck, I don't know how much of the broadcast you watch, but I have an alter ego named Quick Stats, whose information is like 100% pivotal, important all the time. You can hear Berlin chuckling a little because they know how valuable my stats are. When I look at win-loss for XL on blue side, seven wins, two losses. When I look at red side, one win, seven losses. That's not great. Who had side selection? What did you pick? And how will it help or hinder you today? We had side selection, okay. we picked blue side. Okay, right. Berlin gets where I'm going with this. I think I just have one last question as this is coming before the matchup. What is it that you want to see the boys do on the Rift today to take down Astralis to give you that shot at your second playoffs ever? I think the most important thing is that we play cleaner than we did yesterday because even though we beat SK and we were still in the race for playoffs, everyone just felt bad because this is not a performance that a world's level team wants to, like a world's level team wouldn't perform like that. So I just want to see a much cleaner game and a game that gives us confidence going into playoffs if we do make it. I'll tell you now, as the disappointed dad of the broadcast, it's not the expectation I have from XL either. So I'm hopeful for today. What I will say, one very last question. As we look ahead to Vitality Rogue and Misfits Fnatic, you're looking for a Vitality or Fnatic loss. Who is more likely to help XL today, Rogue or Misfits? I think Rogue is more likely to help us, um, and I also kind of hope for that scenario. We had some banter with the, with the Fatality boys in practice last week, so I would really like to knock them out. Oh, I tell you what, if we get to that scenario, I'd love to hear what some of that banter was about. Maybe we'll have another interview later today. Young Buck, thank you so much for taking the time. Berlin, Young Buck, we're going to head back over to Law. Merci beaucoup, quick shot. And happy birthday also, but reflecting on what Youngberg was saying it's here. It's his in, birthday? It's his birthday. Yeah, well, you can, say, you can tell him later. He likes about. to keep it a secret because, you know, <laughs> they're really starting to add up. But about what Youngberg was saying uh, in the interview, I, I smell some confidence on the side of Excel, and it makes sense because they showed up when it mattered yesterday. And Finn and um, Mickey, especially when we had them on the desk, were super reflective of the recent struggles. Yeah, but I still feel like those, those struggles as well, it's, it's great to see that honesty from players as well because it was about, well, we have to adapt now to a style where we're not just playing early game, but we're still playing for other parts of the map as well to facilitate, you know, the likes of the laners and then the laners calling out. Um, and there's still sloppiness to that, but it feels like they're gearing up towards a better position. And I mean, you talk about adapting, Sometimes it's about going back to old strengths for specific players. I mean, Patrick yesterday scaling on into the late game. This guy for so long in the LEC has been such a strong team fighter for them. Even after they fell behind, having this scaling comp and having Patrick on that big scaling pick mm -hmm. really opened up their ability to team fight later on. And, and this was a huge moment for them. And as that's well. the thing for them, really, right? Because it's the fact that, all right, we need to get comfortable with the fact that we have good reliable carries in the late game, but it's also just bridging the back from the early game to that late game. So I think if XL 
until they lock that down, well then they have players like Patrick that will carry the games for you. And it is a do or die match once again here on the set of Excel. And we know that Astralis being eliminated maybe can be the troublemaker here in preventing them from reaching the playoffs. But it is finally time for us to get into the first game. It is do or die now for Excel. As we say, at one loss, we eliminate them from the playoffs contention. And Medic, Kedral, over to you.